Hello, lovely people. I hope you're doing all right. Welcome to the Jaden Show. I'm Jaden Cornelius, your host with the most this Sunday. And the most is the guest that we have on this show. Today is no different. This is an amazing show. If you are into some really soft, sensual, sexy and sophisticated music, not easy sound on a Sunday afternoon, we are going all the way to Illinois, USA, USA even, to meet the amazing Jason Ryan, saxophonist, audio engineer, producer, songwriter. I mean, the boy's amazing. So you're going to meet him in a couple of minutes. But I think we really need to be checking out a little bit of his music. This is Hey You. This is Jason Ryan. Beautiful piece of music. Let's go and meet the man behind the saxophone, the amazing, the incredibly talented, and bloody lovely chap himself, Mr. Jason Ryan. Everybody, this week's special guest. Jason Ryan, welcome <laughs> to the Jaden Show. How are you? I'm I'm awesome and amazing. How are you doing? I'm doing well. You're looking like you're a little bit cozy today, dude. It's it's a little cold, a little chilly where I'm at. Change, really? change of the seasons. It's going to get worse, man. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm completely envious. I really miss being a bit cold and chilly. I'm lo looking forward to those days in the future. So originally you're from California, but now you're living, you're kind of doing your thing in, a, in a, Illinois, right? In uh, yes, I am. Uh, I'm right, right outside of St. Louis, Missouri. So came out here to get a different scene of music, a uh, different vibe and trying to start over, not start over, but reinvent a little bit myself and musically. Okay. And, and do you find that your music is, I mean, have you been there long enough to find how your music is settling in with the, with the people in that area or? Actually, yes. Uh, I'm part of a, a music chart group, uh, number one music.com. And so I've been testing my music out here. So for the past, I'll say past six months or so, uh, my records have been in, rated as in, within the top 10 for Missouri, St. Louis area, mm -hmm. uh, and jazz and R&B. So 
it's being well received right now that's amazing man because your your music has been played all over the world i mean you're a really phenomenal saxophonist so you're a saxophonist producer audio engineer like that's amazing but can you sing uh no oh damn i was like you got the whole package if you can sing <laughs> well man you're like but it would be amazing you can't work well, you can sing through your saxophone right i mean I've, I've been listening to your music and it is outstanding i mean it's beautiful man thank you it's really thank funny I, I, and i don't know why it is like you know you get singers like the beatles they might go out of fashion for a bit but there's always somewhere and someone somewhere listening to beatles um, or different versions of the Beatles. So with artists, it's different, right? But with the saxophone, it tends to kind of come in and come out of fashion. Have you found that? I mean, I remember back in the 90s with Kenny G, and then I first got really into listening to sax my, one of my besties is a saxophonist, but I also really got into like the saxophone in, you know, by listening like to Tony Braxton. Everyone was really using that deep, sultry sax sound in all their stuff. And then all of a sudden, it kind of it was on nearly every single pop R and B record, and then all of a sudden, it just disappeared. Why do? You, what? Why is that? Do you know? Uh, just like uh, as music grows, people grow. Uh, people start liking different things, mm -hmm. and but at the same time, as people try to venture out on different things, they go back to things that they liked in the past, just like the uh, saxophone. The saxophone's been around since the 1700s. Oh my God, It's yeah. been, pop been popularized uh, in jazz music uh, since the 1920s from ragtime. So as it may seem like the saxophone has uh, diminished a little bit, it has never gone away and it will never go away. I think it only, uh, only kind of disappeared a little bit in the pop scene, in like the regular chart music kind of thing because like as you said saxophone is a key instrument in so many other types of music especially jazz and stuff like that so um it was just really really weird all of a sudden like every pop i mean i was a pop singer in the 90s and you always wanted a really great saxophonist on your track and then all of a sudden there's loads of tracks you just seem, don't seem to hear that kind of quality musician anymore it's all i guess it's right. synth synthesizer and dub stuff and all that right uh, some stuff, no. Like what surprised me within like the last three years, saxophone has really progressed, especially in uh, dub and electronic music. Live saxophone. Oh, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember. Um, I was visiting uh, New Delhi, and we were at this hotel. Uh, DJ Oma, he is a big producer uh, for electronic music out in India, but he had a live saxophonist and. This girl was phenomenal and it inspired me to like, hey, you know, I, I like to play around my saxophone, different music. I, I, this may sound weird. I love playing my saxophone to hard rock music, Sweet. like in grunge. I, for some reason, the electric guitars and the saxophone to me really complement one another. But when this girl was playing uh, to, uh, to techno and some other electronic genres of electronic music, it just opened my eyes and I was like, I could probably do something like this. And next thing you know, I'm going on Instagram feeds. Uh, you'll see a couple of girls from the, uh, from, they're from Europe, but they're playing on the yachts. Uh, last two years ago, the, the guy, I can't think of his name, he plays the baritone saxophone and he was playing the New York subway and he was playing electronic beat and now everybody's doing it. So it may not be in the, regular genres we're used to but saxophone is going into other genres and making a, a huge impact there's a guy here in in um quintana Roo in the riviera maya and there's lots of clubs now that have live like trumpeters and stuff like that playing live you know with djs and stuff in in their like in their all night parties and stuff like that and it's really super cool it's really amazing so w w when you were um, little Mr. Ryan, okay, like, <laughs> what was your, like, what was your go-to music? What were your family into, you know, tell, tell us how it all started to the point where you thought, I'm going to start playing saxophone. All right. So my mother, uh, she would always play jazz music all the time. Uh, it was Najee uh george duke uh and several other uh kirk whalem and i'm not all 
and primarily it's all saxophonists. So I'm just listening to all the saxophonists like, oh, I like this. I want to do this. And one day, uh, I was about 10 years old, and I told my mom, I want to play a saxophone. Uh, we were going to church at the time, and she told the priest at the church. And next thing you know, I guess the word got around. Uh, somebody gifted me a 1916 York alto saxophone. And they're like, you can have the saxophone, but you just have to get it fixed up. So I re- did odd jobs, raised the money to get my saxophone fixed. Mm-hmm. And I taught myself how to play. Really? Uh, yeah, I would start listening to uh, Najee and, uh, and all these other players. And I just start trying to figure out how can I sound like them. And after some years of practicing and trying to play, uh, I sat in with my church choir. Everybody looked at me like, what is this kid doing? Because I'm squeaking. But I eventually figured it out. My mom, uh, within, I, I think within like the first year of playing, she, uh, she got uh, me as an actual saxophone teacher. And from there, next day, no, I excelled. Uh, when I was like in elementary school, well, I was in the eighth grade. My brother's in high school. And I started playing the saxophone in his high school band. Wow. So I was in I was in high school and it just stuck with me then. Progressed throughout high school. Um I took a little break uh, because uh, one of my mentors, uh he passed away, but he used to he was on uh Mo Jazz label. This was like in the mid to late nineties. His name was Jay Spencer. Uh he helped introduce hip hop jazz to the world. And he took me into the studio and I just fell in love with all the buttons and faders and trying to figure out what everything did. I took a little break uh, from playing the saxophone. I actually went to LA recording school to learn production and engineering. From there, I worked at Interscope Records and as a third engineer in their uh, studios for a little while. Then I worked with uh, a couple other folks. Then next thing you know, it was like, I miss playing the saxophone, came back to Oakland, uh, Oakland, California. Uh, and my friends, they were playing in the local jazz circuits and they were putting me on like, Hey, come play at this gig, come play at this gig, come play with this band. Uh, next thing you know, uh, there was a, a band uh, called Miss, uh, Miss Lessie. She's a phenomenal percussionist and we start playing, uh, gigs opening up for erica badu uh and jill scott Uh then it went from there to uh talking about creating my own records and i had opportunity uh, with some of my friends to make a couple of trips around the world i had a chance to play in germany i played in delhi i played in agra india uh i was able to play in sicily then i came back home and i was like well what's next uh Everybody was telling me that I was a phenomenal player. I have a unique style. And I was like, why not put a project together? And that was a, a five-year journey. Wow, man. So, d- d- and wait, w- with, with, the, with the project that you're doing about releasing your own music, is it through your own record label or is it? through like a, an external label as well you're just punting it out to different labels uh no it's i'm um, 100 independent it's you doing uh, that yeah. thing yep uh my wife uh i told her what my dream was while while we were dating and next thing you know uh she was like i have a studio booked for you uh and go have at it we start working the production and next thing you know yeah uh I, it was about five years ago i released my first album solely independent uh not really understanding and knowing marketing so i just like just word of mouth yeah and so it was a slow roll but i did it more so for myself to complete a goal mm-hmm. and actually last friday it actually crossed the million stream mark on Spotify. Small, small victory. <laughs> That's a pretty huge victory, dude. That's not a bad going, to be fair. 
No, it, it's not. I, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm still in shock uh, that my music has has the long has the longevity for for five years for something that was just a, initially a passion project of mine. Mm. It's something that people don't, are, you don't have the big powerhouse PR companies and the marketing companies behind you. I mean, because you know, it, you know, as an artist as well, you know, being the artist is an expensive and time consuming job. Being the AR oh, yes. company, the PR company, as well as being the artist, is almost overwhelming. I mean, it's too much. I mean, the amount of hours that you spend recording and editing and downloading and listening, you've got to do double that in all your social medias and things like that. So, the fact that you've oh, yeah. done that without any external help, just you doing your thing, is huge respect to you, dude. Huge respect. Thank you. And in between that time, uh, I started producing for one of my friends. His name is D. Brax. And he's a phenomenal piano player. Okay. And so I started working with him. So I did two projects for him. They got great reviews. Then uh, I want to say about two years ago, uh, there's a song I produced from Ah. She played the saxophone. It's called the the continuation. Uh, that was like yeah, that's about four years ago. But then two years ago, we were talking. He's like, hey, uh, I want to do a remix to the continuation. And I was like, okay. And I'm going back through the files, and. I heard my the whole saxophone part that I written out, and I was like, I have enough to do a whole song. And so I re uh, remixed the whole song and reproduced it, and I released that song. Uh, and yeah, it was January the continuation. It's so a that's my. We're actually going to listen to it at the end of the show because it's actually one of my favourites. So I really, really, really love that track. Super, super. Thank you, thank you. No. So if, if you were sitting back, I mean, like, you play guitar. I mean, sorry, you play saxophone. So, like, when you go home now, do you listen to guitar music just so you can just get the sax out of your head just for, like, two minutes? You listen to something complete? Or do you are you still kind of on all the music that you were on back in the day and what you play? Oh. No, I listen. So there is the song's about ten years old, maybe, and it's from a band called Moth, and the song's called Hell Yeah, or the song, or it's vice versa. Mm -hmm. I will listen. It's weird if I listen to jazz. I'm like, okay, cool, smooth jazz. Okay, I'm good, and I'll play. And I'm like, ah. But when I listen to this one song, this heavy rock song. It takes me to a whole nother level, getting getting in touch with different emotions, and I feel that's like my that's when I play my best. So I'm a little weird. No, that's perfect. I will. It's good to be eclectic to have a really huge library of music in that head, right? Oh yes. Do, do, and I, I, no, go ahead. No, say so. So, like when you're at home chilling out, and you've kind of you've been music on, music on, but you think I don't want to watch TV. I just kind of want to just sit back and listen to something. Do you go back into, I don't know, like Kenny G or some smooth kind of saxophonist kind of groove, or do you go and listen to Evanescence or like, what would be your, your chill out stuff? Uh, Evanescence. Yes. Yeah. That, I'm laughing at that. Cause my wife will just play that. And I was like, and I'll relax to that. Or I'll go to some 1970s, uh, Eric Clapton and, just chill and i'm and they, and, but yes i do listen to other jazz horn players uh but after hearing listening to jazz for so long or even listening to hip-hop for so long i have to go to something else yeah. uh, there are times that i even uh i will vibe out to beethoven sweet man and, and just let that take me to this whole another place yeah which it does that's amazing man such a cool list of artists you've got in your in your chill out zone what are you doing at the moment so at the moment currently uh i am rebuilding a studio in my house mm -hmm. uh but i am still making music i have I'm, i have one song that's already mastered 
but as being your own uh, producer and mixer, sometimes you're become way too much of a perfectionist. Uh, so I have my goal is in by November 15th, I'm going to release another song and it's entitled 4824. Mm -hmm. And I am also working on a more club style uh, electronic jazz song without the saxophone though. Okay. Um, playing uh, pretty much like having uh, having uh, sample trumpets but with more of like a house beat to it okay, and behind so, it. So do you play any other instruments? Mm, I tinkle with the piano but no. That's better than me, dude. And you <laughs> say, and you're like, we're bloody gurus and saxophones, so you don't really need to play anything else. I know um, I was talking to some friends in the States and in Canada, and it was actually part of their kind of their school curriculum was actually to learn an instrument. We never had that in England. So we kind of, well, really? back in my day, we never had that. So I didn't really, I mean, you could probably stay after school and go to like a guitar club. I mean, all kids learn the bloody recorder when they're in primary yeah. school, in the first school, I mean, I was like, I, I kicked some ass with that recorder shit. <laughs> but um, as you get older, you, I mean, I know in the States and definitely in Canada, people are like, oh, you know, I'm taking piano and sax or I'm taking trumpet and trombone or cello, or whatever. We didn't get, I mean, maybe it was just my school or my area, but we never had that opportunity. And, and I really miss the fact that to learn music to me is as important as maths and algebra because it's, it's working creativity. It's the best therapy. It's the best go-to if you have bad home life or bad school life. I mean, it's just music becomes your therapist and your best friend. And it's the way of exercising all your demons on some kind of level. Do you know what I mean? Like you can just really oh, right. plow, plow into that. Whereas um, you can't really on algebra and geography. That's a little bit different. But we never had that. Did you have that in your school life? I mean, in school time, were they really... Um, supportive of you being a musician or was it like no nah, man you've got to be playing football and shit uh it was a little bit of both okay. uh it was it was either sports or music wow um, I, I i tried football for a little bit or american football yeah. uh yeah I'm, I'm a little too slim for that <laughs> however um the school system they supported music but i think it was more so on where you lived for the most part uh, initially, uh, in the eighties, uh, it was common for pretty much, uh, anybody to have access to music class. It wasn't mandatory. Uh, but as times progressed in the nineties in the late nineties, it started going away early two thousands. Most schools, they lost their uh, music programs. And, and I totally agree. Music is a, is a form of therapy, uh, even if as a child you don't recognize it, you're, you know, if you see a keyboard, you just start feeling around when you're stressed. Next thing you know, whatever you're feeling, whether depression or anger, all that could leave you by just feeling the keys and letting that emotion out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So. Did you um <clears throat> did you have a very supportive family or were your family like you've got to go, you've got to work in a bank, son? Like we none of this music stuff. <laughs> You know, you need a real job. Or did you have a family like now? We support you. This is going to be great. Uh, my family is very supportive. Uh, my mother, especially. Um, I, l I learned from her. She never pushed music on me. She was like, you want to play the saxophone? Okay, here, let me help you out. You want to continue playing? Here, uh, I support you. She's like, I will be your number one fan. I will always be in your corner. Uh, so I had that support. Uh, some of my friends, they had the opposite. They were like, you have to play the piano. You have to play this. And now, right now, some of my friends, they're like, I don't even want to see that. So my little network, my family, they were very supportive and, and encouraging to go with my career in music and whatever that looked like. Um, um, so you were really super lucky to have your, your, your family's back. And you were saying that some of your friends weren't as supportive. And they, now they've seen you, right. <clears throat> they know that you've played in all over the world and you're still doing your thing and you're doing your thing way, way, way better because you've been practicing your art for years. 
And they're like, no, that was a good choice, man. We we should be pleased with that you never did piano because saxophone was definitely <laughs> the instrument of choice. Oh, yes. I have several friends who are like, yeah, that's What's you. Wrong. <laughs> uh, even now, it, it blows my mind when I see individuals playing pianos, going through different styles in one song. I, I, I can't fathom. I can't do that. Uh, or... I still don't understand how somebody could play a trumpet with only three valves, but go through go through three different octaves and and play multiple styles. I'm just like I'm in awe. So I have a good set of friends around me. I have some friends who just looked at me like, yeah, whatever. We're we're gonna go this way. We're still friends, but yeah, we're gonna go this way. So where those, wh wh where's the next step for you? Like, where's where's your music taking you next? I mean, really, you've released your own stuff. You've had severe credibility for the stuff that you've done. You've played worldwide. I mean, you might not be on stage with Beyonce and in a mansion with six swimming pools and a Lamborghini and seven ponies. However, for an, you know, you are receiving the fruits of, you know, your amazing talent. Where do you want that talent to take it? Like to take you and to take your life and, you know, to lead you into the future so i would definitely love for my music to take me to a place where i could live comfortably 100 on my music mm -hmm. uh, and i'm not going to say that's not a reality uh however that is a goal of mine mm -hmm. but one thing i do love about music and we touched on this uh when we talked about uh music being a therapy is where I could just continue to put out music that could help somebody mm -hmm. uh, go through a that are, that's going through a mental challenge. Uh, I I want my music to be uh, therapeutic, mm -hmm. and if my music could help somebody go through a situation, uh, whether it's bad or positive. Uh, that's where I wanted to go. I want my music to change somebody's life. And that's my biggest goal. That's amazing. Uh, and, you know, at the same time, no, not to make light, but if somebody uh, has a child or practice making a child to my music. I was going to say that, like, mate. Maybe it'll be, after me. <laughs> it'll be creating. I've heard some of those songs. They are smooth. So it'll be creating some new life around the globe, I think, not just being a therapy. That is hey, that's music. Hey, that's the that, that's therapy too. <laughs> yeah, or not, mate? Have you done that with the adolescent years yet? That's probably <laughs> they have to go man. back to your music just to calm down. What 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 would say has been like the the kind of the highlight of your career so far? Because you've done a lot, dude. The highlight of my career, uh, I was thirteen years old. Uh, Najee, he's a big jazz saxophonist out here in the United States. Mm -hmm. He brought me on stage, allowed me to sit in with him. And I was actually able to play with uh, a true jazz legend keyboardist who passed away, George Duke. That was one of my first big highlights. Uh, second one, of course, uh, playing with Miss Lacey, the percussionist, and the opportunities that she afforded me, uh, I can actually say that I played in front of a, an audience of 45,000 people because of her. But then also to reflect on playing in a, a castle, in uh, old castle in Germany, uh, then going to this, uh, be able to play, nobody knows who I, who I was, uh, but I was afforded opportunities, three opportunities to play at this club called Molecule in Agra, India, mm -hmm. down the street from uh, the Taj Mahal. Oh, yeah. Amazing. And the people I've met along the way, I'm, I'm like, that's amazing. And not even to discredit uh, our conversation, how we interacted, and you're like, hey, would you like to do an interview? Do you know 
you are my first real interview I've ever had. Really? Yeah. Oh, man, I so should've, I should have dressed up more. Yeah. <laughs> so, so even this, I'm like, this is amazing. Uh, you know, it might took us a couple of weeks to coordinate our time, but dude, when you reached out, I didn't take this for granted. I'm like, yes. That's amazing. I'm like, so I know there's going to be some more milestones, but even our conversation today is a huge milestone. Wow, that's incredible. And for, for me, it was really interesting because like when I, I was doing popping that back in the 90s in an R&B group and, you know, like we were doing really, really well in the UK and Europe at the time. And um, but no one, unless you were someone, no one was interested like, you know, and you could be in magazines and you could be touring different countries, but no one was really interested. And there was no one like I've been doing music now. You know, I've been semi-professional for 32 years and no one's interviewed me. I mean, I've, I've had a couple in my later years when, when I've been doing things like, um, you know, like offering classical. But but no one I had to approach people and say, Look, can I come on your show? No one ever came to me and said, Jaden, we really want you on the show. You know, when I was a pop star, it was different. But as I was, you know, finding my feet on my own and finding my craft and working on my own, no one really was that particularly bothered. And that's why when I think when COVID happened and I lost my platform, to I couldn't go out and gig anymore because it was, you know, lockdown. So I was like, yeah. I still really want to meet lovely people. I still want to chat about people's passions and their creativity and their music because I'm stuck in the jungle in Mexico and I don't really talk to anyone. And I really miss talking to people with that on that same creative path, you know, so yeah, and give people just an hour, 45 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, whatever, just to talk about themselves and their passion. I just think there's nothing more interesting in hearing how someone has kind of, you know, people only seem to be interested in the overnight success bit. But that person has probably been working for 42 years before their overnight success, you know? Yeah. And so that's kind of, that's why I started doing this was just, I like speaking to people. I don't get an opportunity to speak in English living in Mexico that much. So I just wanted to speak to people about their incredible craftsmanship. And mate, that's the reason why I reached out to you because I was listening to your music and I was like, this boy is smooth. <laughs> <laughs> like, Thank really you. Amazing. Really amazing. Well, I hope there are going to be, loads of people scrabbling over each other to get to get you on their show and i hope one day you'll come back to my show when you're i don't know when you're guest starring on beyonce's next tour or whoever then you know or your own and she's supporting you that would be, <laughs> that, yeah. that'd be awesome that'd be pretty cool then i hope you um i still hope you'll come back and talk to little Jaden on his Jaden show that'll be bloody heck amazing. yeah uh especially you know when I uh, do my ne do my next release, you know, maybe do a snippet on that, and even the project I told you about the electronic with the trumpet, you know, because that's going to a different avenue. And I was listening to uh, I forgot the name of the song, but you released it like about three four months ago. Oh, the lost. Oh, it was on. Dude, that song right there, that joint took me back. It <laughs> it took me back. No, like yeah. The production and the singers, I was like, it took me back to when I first got introduced to like uh, electronic disco music a little bit. Okay. And because that's because that's what like one of my loves. Um, and I was just listening to it and I was just like, it brought back some memories and I was like, this is dope. Oh, sweet, man. And, and it's like uh, UK style pop is it is uh, a genre that it definitely holds its own weight you know because every time people usually hear pop we only think of uh like miley cyrus and american pop but if you go back in the history of pop music and uk pop that genre and you guys you guys had your legacy the brit pop and you guys the brit pop yeah and I must admit, because I was a child of it, 
it wasn't always my thing. I was listening to, you know, American R and like R and B and pop artists because I, I guess, like when it was always on the radio and around you, you kind of become a little bit complacent, right? You don't, you don't normally listen to it. But now, like being out of the country, and I'm in Mexico, where you know, to hear someone like Depeche Mode or Howard Jones or um, I don't know Kylie Minogue on the radio, like playing on the radio in the jungle of Mexico, I'm like. Well, man, we were doing some good tracks back in the day. Like, yeah. I think we, like now I'm more of a fan of that kind of that whole kind of UK pop scene than I ever was when I was in the UK, because we really were were a sound very. I mean, the nineties was an amazing time for music. Anyway, for me, that was my favorite time. It was mixing the flavors of R and B and pop together, and there was some real like some great stuff coming out back in the nineties. But I never really. I never really felt the eighties. I said because I was probably because I was going through my adolescence in it. You see, so it was probably yeah way more traumatic for me just being me than it was to listen to music. But um, but now listening back, I'm like, yeah, like, we were like that Kylie Minogue. She's bloody amazing. She's still got like a top, you know, international top like top forty album or something with tension or whatever it's called. And she's still rocking after like 40 years in the business. I'm like, raw oh, man, she's still in doing good. And I watched a documentary actually on Tina Turner. I've always been a big fan of Tina Turner. I bloody loved her. And she went, and if she was just saying that the States kind of after the I can Tina thing, they kind of kicked her out a little bit, but she went, ended up going to England and making like the private dance of that kind of album. And it was very yeah. pop influenced, I guess. Um, but the Brits were just loving this new flavor of like she says she felt way more supported in England because of the music she was doing than back back in her home country. And I think I think you're probably right. We we do we're not the best, but we do good stuff in the UK. Oh. I'm like the UK, you guys, you know, you guys adapted to what Americans brought over. Because, uh, like, what? Wasn't, like, in World War II, was it the Beatles? Or was it? I forgot what band. I saw a documentary. Was, uh, they were like, yeah, we would get uh, some old rock records or something um, from the military folks, and we'll listen. Next thing you know, uh, we'll start doing our own version. Then at the same time, you have uh, some folks like me, or even some uh, other indie artists who will listen to music from the UK and listen to your guys' style. And, you know, we borrow that style. And next thing you know, we're a big old melting pot with music. We're growing. And we have some phenomenal music right? coming. It's like, everyone, yeah. like when everyone shares everything and we all get different, some flavors just resonate with us more than they resonate with, the, you know, the boy next door and, you know, you just feel, you just hear that one thing. Think, ah, yeah, that's the lick, man. That's what I really want to be doing. Stuff like that. You know, we said we've got some great artists. We're very, very lucky, you know, with um with, with who we've got going on in the UK at the moment. So, yeah, I'm feeling that. But I'm really pleased you like my song. That was amazing. I hadn't done any, I was doing classical and like pop opera. So I thought, you know, time to grow up, but obviously tattooed and pierced, not many classical singers looking like this uh, in a theatre. So I was kind of enjoying going, yes, and dorma. And it was only when I came here and um, I started singing in Mexico and I'm, I'd like, I'd be halfway through like a Pavarotti song and someone would go, oh, do you know any Whitney Houston? I'm like, what? I'm like, okay, I'll learn a Whitney Houston. It says, oh, I want to dance with somebody. And I thought, you know, at the age of 50 years old, I'm now recording pop music again. So I, ha I had like a uh, a break for like, oh my God. So what was I, early 20s? So 25 odd years of doing pop music and trying to grow up with my style and my genre. And now I'm doing pop again and I love it. I've done a little bit of reggaeton with an artist here as well called um, Without uh -huh. Me. That's on my that's on my YouTube as well. And yeah, I'm that's loving awesome. I'm just loving. I think what you were saying about, you know, you really love playing the saxophone to a bit of, you know, a bit of like heavy metal and, you know, dark metal music. And I just think it's part of you. And, you know, we, I'm not always in a happy mood. I'm not always in a dark mood. I'm not always in an angry mood. I fluctuate. And as does my music, sometimes I just really want to listen to ABBA. And sometimes I really want to listen to Evanescence or, you know, Roberta Flack or, you know, whoever, yeah. just, you know, whoever I'm in the mood for. And I think 
as an artist, especially in the 80s and 90s, you had to be pigeonholed. You know, if if you were a saxophonist, you could do pop or R&B. If you were a classical singer, you could do classicals, but maybe into musicals. If you were a pop singer, then God forbid you bring any other kind of flavor into your pop music because it has to appeal <laughs> to the pop, you know, the pop people. And and now I think more than ever is actually I'm just Jaden and I'll sing Adele and do a Lippa and Pavarotti and the Beatles and Celine Dion and a couple of Mexican mariachi tracks, you know, because I just enjoy all of it. And I think, you know, with your music as well, you're saying that you just like taking saxophone into other worlds of music as well. That's amazing, man. Thank you. And have you ever thought about taking uh, a pop beat, but singing classical uh, uh, on top of it? Yeah, I actually did one. It was called, I forgot what it's called now. Do you remember back in the day, there was a film called Save the Last Dance? Yeah. So that was my favorite film, like Julia Stiles. I can't remember the dude's name now. And they had that kind of really classical, anthemic, um, kind of ballerina kind of sound. And then all of a sudden, this like R and B beat came in. And this, you know, I can't remember who the artist was, but she started singing this song over kind of quite a heavy, classically produced track. But they brought in this R and B beat, and you know, and all of a sudden it became an R and B song. And I wanted to do the opposite. I wanted to do like an R and B song, but with a bit more of a classical flavor from a classical artist point of view. So I, it's called oh. live the dream back in the day. So I tried that a few years ago and that was quite fun to do, but I'd love to do something else. That's my kind of music anyway. So, Hey, who knows? G give me some time. I might throw something your way. I am way up for collaboration. <laughs> way, way, way up for collaboration. That'd be amazing, man. Jason Ryan and Jaden Cornelius. That sounds like a future empire, dude. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm on it. Wait, when you've got something that you think will suit me and you think we can do, I've got a little home studio set up here. We can do something. That'll be bloody perfect. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, so you've cause... got a new song coming out. I hope you're going to come back when you've got other projects. We can do little Jaden show specials. And we can catch up, keep abreast of what you're doing, what's going on for you when you're doing your your EDM stuff, and when you've got your new um, your new favors coming out as well. So you're always welcome to come back. That would be super cool. Where can people find you? Because now they've met you, they've already heard <laughs> "Hey You," and they're going to hear the continuation in a minute. But now they've met you, they're all going to be like, "Damn, this man is cool." Where can I go and find him? Where are you? So, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. YouTube, TikTok. You can find me uh, at Jason Ryan Music. Yeah, J A everywhere. J A S O N R Y A N M U S I C. And JasonRyanMusic.com as well. At, yes, <laughs> as well. Have you got any live shows coming up or any gigs coming up at the moment? Or is that something you'll be doing the rest of this year or next year? Or. I plan on starting uh, doing live shows uh, back in January. Okay. Because uh, new area, still trying to get a band together. Yeah. I prefer I prefer playing with band uh, with a full band over than pl uh, playing with tracks. Uh, so, I met a, I got a couple keyboard players out here. I'm just trying to fill get the rest of the people that I need. Okay. So 2024. Is going to be the year of the gigs yes i'm liking that i'm bloody liking that so people at home you've met him you're in love and now you're going to want to check out his whole library of songs and go and find him on all of his social media platforms and his music download and streaming platforms as well jason thank you so much for being part of my show i super appreciate your time i'm super pleased that we managed to coordinate something <laughs> no thank you no, thank, thank you very much. And we'll we'll be in touch, definitely. And like I said, when your next project is up and running, give me a shout and we'll do another show all about it. Sounds good. Take right. care. Thank you so much, my friend. Uh, well, I'm super bloody excited, quite frankly, to be doing a collaboration with that man. He is so bloody talented. So I am really, really, really looking forward to 2024 just to do that. 
How bloody cool. What an amazing guy he is. Please go and follow him on his social media. I know you want to because he's superbly talented and a really, really lovely guy. Go and show brother some love. Go and support him and his wonderful talent on all of his social media platforms and go and download and check and stream and just do everything you can with his music. Play it at full blast. Send it to your neighbours as a present. I mean, just just do whatever you need to do to support that guy's music. You can find them on all of his download and streaming platforms as well. You guys rock. Thank you so much for being part of my show. Thank you for hanging around and watching another The Jaden Show. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please subscribe. Please tell all your friends. Please share. Please like. I want to see your comments. So please leave a comment. Thank you so much again. I hope and I wish you a wonderful, wonderful new week. I'm super excited to be back with you next Sunday with another super special person. You'll find out midweek who it is. So make sure you have tuned into my social media as well. That little glimpse, that little taster of who's to come on the next show. I will see you next Sunday on The Jaden Show. Take care. Stay beautiful. Bye-bye. Oh, before I go, I just wanted to let you know that we need to be watching the continuation, the song that we were talking about throughout the interview. You're going to love this. This is super, super lush. Enjoy a little bit more of Jason Ryan. Stay beautiful. See you next week. Bye-bye.